everybody, welcome back. Today I am just gonna be doing a practice cast watching um, Cloud9 play Axiomatic. This is from the Korean Pro League. Is it the last play day? Don't remember. Either way, very recent. So Axiomatic are pretty solidly sat in the bottom. And the interesting thing about that is that in the Korea Open, they ended up being at the top, Axiomatic League. So they're having a really tough time here in the Pro League. Now, we're seeing Clubhouse is going to be the map that we'll be playing on today. Axiomatic banning out Villa and Bank. And Cloud9 banning out Consulate and Border with both Cafe and Coastline taken. And we did see Cloud9 play Cafe and Coastline, both of them, in fact, against Scars in the last series that they went up against. That was very interesting. Um, it was quite backwards and forwards, actually. Scars ended up taking both of those series, but it was fairly back and forth in terms of no one was taking a really defining lead at any one point. And the thing that was particularly interesting about those series was the fact that Scars and Cloud9 have almost entirely different playstyles. They're kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum with Cloud9 having very good individual firepower, but not very strong strategic power and Scars having very strong strategic power and good ideas and working together, but no one necessarily stands out as the absolute star on the team. And so that meant that Cloud9 were able to do better in strategies where they were trying to utilize that brawn versus scars using strategies that were a little bit more thought out and could catch cloud nine out and in fact the successes that we saw cloud nine have against some of scars more thought out compositions and more thought out strategies was when they just came in and completely took them by surprise now it'll be interesting to see if that does work out on clubhouse especially as clubhouse is a little bit more uh, people just are very set in their ways as to how they like to play Clubhouse. It's quite stock standard. You sort of know what you're going for. You know what you're going to expect. Whereas I think Cloud9 could be a team that we see turn things around a little bit. Now, of course, in the Korean Pro League, you can kind of say that about anyone and anything. Because it is one of those regions. They have some more kind of creative strategies, some more unorthodox ideas especially when you compare it to what we see over in the west in particularly eu and na of course so that's going to be something i really look out for and axiomatic i want to see them i don't know i want to see some hope i want to see some fire behind the eyes this team that did so well in the korea open against these pro league teams as well as talon esports who were the qualified team for that tournament axiomatic were able to really show up and you come into the pro league and they're just really struggling now maybe it's that the other teams decided that they were going to kind of hide strategies they didn't want anything to be revealed before the pro league and that's why they allowed themselves to do it a little bit worse and maybe axiomatic just didn't do that so where we were kind of seeing them in terms of the skill comparatively with their co-teams was a little bit warped because we were seeing them compared and performing against teams that weren't showing their full colors. So that is definitely something that's going to be very interesting. And of course, Cloud9, they're going to be looking to, I don't remember what the standings were at this point, but they're either looking to retain the top spot or to take it back off of Scars. And when you're going up against the team who really have been struggling, this is the opportunity you're going to have to think, okay, maybe this can be an easy win. And maybe this can be where we are able to get some good points on the board. It's three points if you win the series one point if you draw this could be a good time to get ahead especially if they get six points on the board from two wins that they're going to be looking to achieve today it's going to be interesting especially in things like a cctv cash defense where you typically see someone like a maestro for example situated on the rafters in the garage one thing that cloud nine really fell victim to quite a lot especially in playing in cafe dostoevsky against scars was having their maestro taken down fairly early maybe it was just the scars were targeting it a bit more their targeting was a little bit uh better than what i would maybe expect to see come out from axiomatic not that i want to really talk too soon about that but the fact that when you're placing someone like that to kind of anchor down and be able to take those long sight lines and ward other people off it's not really the position you want to be in i, I mean for example um 
Ocean on the side of Scars, he was playing the Sophia and he was kind of just left to be able to have access to these rotation routes through the bar in Cafe Dostoevsky because the Maestro was taken down so early. And so something like that here happens in Clubhouse, uh, for example, and the attacking team, Axiomatic, is able to get control of the garage and just kind of waltz on in and use utility into that and overrun Cloud9. That's something that's maybe a point of concern. So that's going to be fairly interesting to look out for. So, okay, let's just get into, into the game. There you go. They look so cool with their matching white shirts and their happy smiles and Korean casters just know what's up they if you've never heard korean casting there's so much just like oh, 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 yeah, which is korean for hey <laughs> um definitely a lot of fun i i think european casting has got some some catching up to do but now let's take a look at the picks and bands that is going to be going on here cloud nine i reckon Oh, there's almost definitely going to be a hard breacher band. I would expect Montagna going to get banned. That's kind of unsurprising here in in Korea. The Korean region really enjoys a good Monty. It kind of doesn't really matter on what the map is. Monty is certainly part of the cool club. And he's going to be joined by Maverick. So there we go. There's that hard breacher that you see getting banned. That is going to allow Hibana and Thermite to remain on the board. But it's quite common to see both of them get played on this map. And then as we come into the defenders, Echo, classic. And I would not be shocked to see Mira be the last one, get banned out. But it is career, of course. You never know what is going to happen. Let's see what Cloud9 decide to do. Oh, okay. It's going to be Castle, not Mirror. So the Mirror is going to be available and instead the Castle isn't going to be up on the board. None of those barricades, none of those forced rotations, forced use of utility will be there from those gadgets. Can you call a wall a gadget? I don't really know. Either way, we're going into Church and Arsenal. We have... Yepeshir and Mugishir, Church and Arsenal, down in the basement. So there you go, you do see the mirror is going to be played there by Nova on the side of Cloud9. They're also going for the double electrification with the Kaiden Bandit. Oh, I speak too soon, the mirror isn't actually going to be played. Instead, Pulse is going to come out and the Capitan on the side of Axiomatic is going to be switching on over to the Thatcher. So, that's going to be obviously exceptionally useful when you're thinking about having these electrifications. I don't really, how, what's the best way to refer to that? I always call them zappy boys, but I feel like that's not really a, the best way to refer to it. Either way, the Thatcher is going to be very useful against the electrified reinforcements that we will see. They're going to be relying on that to be able to get through them. Otherwise, there is, of course, that chance that you could be losing many of your x or your uh, Thermite Breach charges on the way. And I am particularly interested to see where OCN is going to be, going to be placed. He's an okay... Jaeger, I mean, I I kind of don't really know what else to say about him. He had some good moments. He had some poor moments in the series up against Scars. The thing with Cloud9's roaming is they don't play it quite as roamy as you would expect. Sweet Black... First kill, not even entirely sure what was happening there with Jinhu, but the Zofia is not going to be available there for the side of Axiomatic. And that is a pretty big operator to lose. I like these pre-placed C4s as well, actually, here by Nova. It means he gets the opportunity to kind of move around a little bit and get some stuff done without having to worry about rushing to throw a C4 up. Particularly when you know that there's going to be operators wandering around on that central hallway area or uh, rather in the kitchen or in the bar area and you can just open up that floor without having to rush so there is one c4 left there for nova 
and it's just going to be providing that information. This is why we're seeing RBT start to shoot through the floor here. Of course, you want to be going for anyone who may be underneath. And when you're playing here on the basement, you can pretty much bet that there's going to be someone below passing on intel to the rest of the team, or at the very least playing below. RBT holding onto this staircase right now, but that does make his position very well known to the rest of Cloud9. Can't actually see where OCN, OCN is here now. So actually, as far as his roam game goes, unknown at the moment. Would not be surprised if he was in blue, which is what you may expect. There's a C4 going off, but wasn't going to get anything. In fact, many C4s going off right now, and we're starting to see Axiomatic maybe, well, maybe make a push down, but also maybe not. Instead, just opening up more of that floor. There goes a smoke, and his OCN is in blue, as I predicted, trying to get a sight up into that hatch. It's going to be keeping Nero behind. Further back, not going to be moving down just yet. Now, RBT trying to get some of these lucky shots. Not going to be able to hit anything, but it is kind of ballsy to be going down here where there's so many of Cloud9's players and you're taking trick shots like that because they can just move in and aggress on you and Cloud9 have proven that that is indeed what they are good at. Sweet back going on a bit of a flank. There we go. RBT is going to be falling down. Cyril as well. Nice double kill there picked up for Sweet Black. And talking of picking up, Axiomatic are going to be having to pick up the diffuser before they can continue on. But just Nero is alive, barely even. And that's a flawless round for Cloud9 and a pretty disappointing start for Axiomatic. And it did seem fairly... What's the best way to put it? It seemed a bit... Like, they had no direction. They were trying to open up the floors, use the staircases. Cloud9 were prepared by using those C4s. They had them all available. They sent out their bandit to go on a little wander. He was able to get two kills, as well as, of course, the pulse providing pressure. And then you had OCN on the Jaeger in blue. So there was a pressure being dealt from Cloud9 that Axiomatic just sort of wandered into and didn't really think all that much about when deciding what it was they were going to do. Now, heading on up to CCTV and Cash on the second floor, Nova going to be on the Valkyrie. I'm actually quite a fan of Nova's Valkyrie. We have seen it before. He's quite an opportunistic Valkyrie. Again, playing with those C4s, he's very quick to make sudden rotations and I don't want to say make decisions on the spot, but be able to judge well what to do with his utility. Throwing those C4s fast, aiming correctly. It's not just about having good aim. It's about being able to make that very quick judgment when you have limited utility. And once it's gone, it's gone. Nova is someone who, I have to say, I have been fairly happy with the way that he does play the Valkyrie. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of that. Envy Taylor on the Legion going to be interesting as well because he is somebody who when playing the Legion has typically gone down fairly early, leaving Cloud9 without those goo mines available to them. But they are going to be sort of relying on them here. They'll they'll want that push to be slowed down, especially as Axiomatic have brought the Capitan with them as well. If you can keep him as far back as possible, that would be incredibly useful because, of course, the Capitan with those asphyxiation bolts does not actually need to be up in the room taking a gunfight face-to-face -face in order to deal in damage with his utility. OCN just taking some shots there. That's going to leave Jinu really low already again. If this Sophia keeps going down first, that's going to be very questionable and very concerning for Axiomatic. Instead, making the rotations over here to the CCTV wall. Probably going to be breaching that. Sending in the EMP from afar. And we've just got Hedy waiting here. Probably going to use that bandit trick to ensure that Axiomatic have a hard time trying to break in to CCTV. Goodbye drones. <laughs> and yeah, it does look here like Axiomatic. They're trying to find alternative ways in the problem with having this muted is you can't listen out for the well okay i was gonna say you can't listen out for the breaches but you can see 
the earthquake that comes as a result. So there we go. We know that they've opened it up and we can see both the smoke with Sweet Black playing and Hedy on the bandit getting ready to come from different angles just to face anyone. Jin is going to be going down to Envy Taylor. That's the first death on the board, but Hedy is going to be traded out as well. That bandit no longer there, but he has mostly done his job. The most disappointing thing about that is the fact that Hedy is pretty good at going on a slight roam, playing quite agile on the bandit and with envy taylor so low as well this could be of concern too like i said earlier his tendency to go down early in the round has been a concern from cloud nine thus far the buck no longer going to be a threat but this is where we have to wait to see what is going to happen with cyril on the capitan now he's waiting just outside the garage. We're seeing those asphyxiation bolts come in and it did deal in damage to Sweet Black, but Nero's gonna be the one to finish him off. And it looks like Axiomatic are actually starting to make some moves. Nova still waiting behind that deployable shield, potentially going to be a saving grace for Cloud9 just in those back stairs there. It's making it very hard for the remaining two members of Axiomatic to decide to actually move into the building. And with under 20 seconds left to go, they're going to have to make a decision. Otherwise, they have no hope of getting the diffuser down. Nova going to be taking those shots. Does not actually achieve anything as far as deaths go but when the time is this low it's looking very unlikely for axiomatic to succeed and cloud nine are going to take out the round so i think axiomatic they tried a little bit harder and were a little bit more um organized in what their strategy was and what they were trying to go for i think that cyril on the capitan should have maybe played a little bit more assertively you don't want to necessarily be so passive on the capitan because, I mean, it's kind of like, what is the point in, in that situation? You're going to have to try and take those shots anyway. There's going to be no one up there in CCTV or in the garage who's going to kill those members for you. And if you're deciding to come in through the garage yourself, you've got to make those moves happen. Because everybody else is going to be coming in through CCTV. Or at least waiting for the members in CCTV and cash to be downed before they can move in through CCTV. So you do really have to work together at an even sort of level of aggressiveness in that situation. Now moving on to gym and bedroom here as the third site. Pretty standard here as far as choices of defensive sites go for Cloud9. Cloud9 have in the past kind of chosen various off sites to throw off their opponent but not just that they've also avoided certain sites and stuck to just two maybe but clearly they're not concerned about that here against axiomatic mirror window going up in connector oh not connector sorry in cache that will allow them to keep an eye on anyone who decides they want to attempt to come up in through the garage and it will be interesting to see Axiomatic try to deal with these mirror windows, especially this one actually here uh, on the bathroom wall. This is going to make it so hard here for Axiomatic to actually enter into this site. It's pretty standard here on Clubhouse, especially on this site particularly. Ooh, mind those stuns. On this site particularly to hard breach the jacuzzi wall and then come in through the bathroom but when you have an electrified jacuzzi wall and then a mirror window in through the bathroom that's going to make it very very hard for the attackers to enter in and it's going to be interesting to see how this works out cloud nine were clearly very happy when axiomatic didn't ban the mirror because it meant then that they did not have to both an x kairos and a thermite hard breach that's a interesting choice they have at least opened it up so it's a good start there for axiomatic but potentially not the best use of their utility i don't know either way bandit's going to be electrifying the bathroom wall now and this is the one with the mirror window so that's also going to give them that extra line of sight onto the attackers trying to enter in through and of course if they decide that they want to turn around and take a different route because it's too much pressure well they have already used thermite breach charge and an x kairos and so that's going to leave them lacking for utility if they need to hard breach somewhere else in fact there we go there's the x kairos going in to the different wall over there 
Ocean. He's getting ready here in the logistic office. And this is the thing, axiomatic, they're just not entirely sure how it is they are going to break into this site. They haven't even been able to get in through the building just yet. And Cloud9 have got it pretty, pretty locked down. All these points of ingress are covered. Though I say that, Hedy does go down. And in fact, Cloud9 are going to be getting some kills back onto the opposing team. That key IQ has gone down and now Thermite as well. OCN having a bit of a tear for now. And now this just leaves two members left on Axiomatic. 30 seconds left, so there is time for them to do things. But with four members of Cloud9 still up, it's going to make it particularly hard. OCM with his deployable shield here trying to shoot through the wall. Doesn't actually get anything just yet, but he is well protected. Nova holding this angle here on the Kaid. And Cyril's trying to get those shots, but if you have to peek, that makes it risky business. And there's 10 seconds left remaining. Such low HP for both of these members on Axiomatic. There's pretty much no way they're going to be able to get this round. And Cloud9, they're going to take the third round. And this is a great start for this team. That was... A really cool defense, in my opinion. I mean, that's kind of what happens when you allow the mirror to stay up on Clubhouse, because you just have so much of an advantage against these attacking teams, and they are expending their utility to try and break into the site, and they just can't do it, especially if you're able to get those bandit tricks up like Cloud9 were doing, constantly putting the batteries back down, wasting the utility, the attacking team decide they're going to try getting through somewhere else. Let's look at logistic office. Let's open that door. Well, no, because then you've got a Jaeger who's waiting there below the hatch. He's going to shoot you as you fall through. Axiomatic. Potentially, well, I don't want to say you're going to potentially regret banning the Echo, because that's also not a bad ban. It could just be one of those unfortunate scenarios where Cloud9 feel that they are confident enough that they will be able to play with a mirror against Axiomatic better than Axiomatic will against them. So coming back down to Church and Arsenal now, Cloud9 playing the same composition that they were the first time round, going to have the pulse with the double zappy zappy. And it worked so well for them before, but on the first round, it wasn't even necessarily that Cloud9 did such a stellar defense. It was that Axiomatic could just seem lost. I want to be looking for Jinu to not die straight away again, because having the Zephyr on the board may actually help them out a little bit. <laughs> but as they start to enter in, we shall see. RBT, of course, going to be looking out for those gadgets. That's going to give Axiomatic a lot more intel insofar as how they can deal with Cloud9, Cloud9's defense, especially if, you know, they're able to get it to work well and not have RBT go down early. Not that's been too much of a problem, but Axiomatic, one of their big issues so far just seems to be that coordination. And if you can't coordinate with your primary intel givers... That's going to be a problem. Now, Nova, with the pulse, the cardiac sensor, is going to be able to look through. This is interesting, seeing Sweet Black get forced back. In fact, he is going to be dying. And that's going to make it a lot easier for Cyril and Jinu to sit here in the stairway, have a little bit of a drone to see what's going on downstairs. But it does mean that that stairway is now open because that was being held by Sweet Black on the bandit. So already a good start here for Axiomatic. This is where you start to see Nova wants to get a decent amount of return intel. They know that there's going to be a lot of droning downstairs. Envy Taylor trying to take this angle here. You can see onto the bottom of the stairs and that's kind of the pressure that C9 are going to be relying on now to hold Axiomatic back as they start to come in through. A lot of those crouch holes being utilized here. But they know that their enemies are kind of running around beside them. And it's only a matter of time until they start to ingress in. MB Taylor desperately looking for these angles. And this is where you see RBT trying to get a look at where those gadgets are. Because that could be the key 
to help axiomatic here. In comes the stun grenade, but it's not going to be quite a uh, smoke grenade, sorry, but it's not going to be quite enough. OCN looking through one of these tiny peak holes. Now, bullet holes coming through. There's drones. Cloud9 are being completely read like a book here, and Axiomatic are being able to move on in. MV uh, Hedy is going to be going down. One more member lost on the side of Cloud9. MV Taylor is in a really tricky position here, and in fact, he's going to be falling to Nero. Axiomatic moving in even more. OCN's protected by the ADS, but is it going to be enough? It's just him and Nova remaining. Down goes the Diffuser, and we're starting to see a rush from the remaining members of Cloud9 into the point. Jinu, looking down the other side of the hallway, is going to get Nova as he crosses it, trying desperately to get to the site. And OCN, on the time tiniest sliver of HP. He's looking for something. He just wants to get a kill. It's not going to be enough. And Axiomatic take their first round of Clubhouse. And this could be where things start to turn around. When Axiomatic use that coordination, when they start to read Cloud9, look at the intel they're using, this is where things could start getting good for this team. Cloud9 don't like it. They're like, nope, we're going back to Church Arsenal. Yepishu and Mugishu in the Jia, the basement. Now, Cloud9 aren't going to be changing up their composition, and in fact, neither are Axiomatic. Oh, well, Cloud9, maybe they are. Okay, going to the Legion. This is interesting. So instead of using the pulse to have the cardiac intel to predict where those members of Axiomatic are, they're actually going for a strategy here where they intend to slow the push of Axiomatic. And it makes sense. A lot of the reason that Axiomatic were able to get into the bomb site on that last round was because they managed to bring down Sweet Black and then had a very easy way down the stairs. So if they can line the stairs with those goo mines, that will make it considerably harder for Axiomatic to push down that route, even if they do kill a member of Cloud9 who may be watching that area. So this is quite, a, I think, a good decision from Cloud9. Evidently, what they did before didn't work out. And having Sweep Like out there, it left him vulnerable. They don't want to risk that vulnerability again. So... I'm interested to see how this is going to work out, if Axiomatic are able to deal with it, or if this is enough to hold them back and prevent them from entering in on the site. Yeah, sweep, okay, sweep black. He's starting off upstairs, which he did actually in the last round as well, if I remember correctly, but he is going to still be on the central stair watch. RBT moving in. And here we go. They're straight away again going for the stairs. They knew that he was there. So this is why Sweet Black has now started to move on down. And Zafia just opening up the floor with those breach charges you start to get the eyes down through into the hallway again axiomatic they're just trying to apply pressure down here we're getting the 1v1 on the staircase but it's not going to be cloud nine who win that one out sweep like once again going down and it doesn't look right now like axiomatic are being slowed down this actually just gives rbt a great opportunity to shoot through the floor at those gadgets that she can see you see some of the goo mines on the ground there i think but so far, it does not seem to have proved much of an issue for Axiomatic. But Cloud9, remember what happened before. And they're going to try and change things up. There we go. So Nova and OCM working together there to bring down the claymores that were blocking the top of the oil pit so they can actually climb up and go on a bit of a flank now. Nova did just take quite a decent amount of damage. I don't know who that was from, but it is going to make it a little bit harder for them to work on this roam together. OCN's just trying to hold this angle here in the lounge, but it could be enough if they are able to catch up with some of the members of Axiomatic. There goes the smoke out in the hallway. No one's going to get caught up in it just yet. But 
anything that Cloud9 can do right now to hold Axiomatic's push and just keep them behind, waste some of their time, that's going to work very much in their favor, especially if those walls are still electrified, they're still reinforced. Hedy is going to be falling, so those smokes no longer are available, but there is, of course, the chance that he used them all. I did see two go down. Don't know if he used three. Either way, MV Taylor is going to have the pressure on him to be making this anchor and holding the long angles work. OCN, he's trying to get these members who are dropping in through the hatch, but Nero is planting the diffuser. This is where we're going to have to see Cloud9 starting to make a move. They've got to do something, but Jinu's going to bring OCN down, and MV Taylor's falling as well. So that Kaid is gone too. Nova, he wants to get someone else, and those Goomines are out and about, but why is he just waiting stock still? They're in the other bomb site. They've already planted the diffuser and Nova has to do a retake. Standing still is not going to help. They're not going to come looking for you if you're just going to stay there. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Axiomatic get a flawless round onto Cloud9 here in Church Arsenal. And Cloud9 are probably thinking, okay, we're going to go to a different bomb site here. Now, I'm really interested about the fact that Nova used those goo mines in church instead of on the stairway i would have assumed that he was going to use them on the stairway to try and hold back the members of axiomatic as they tried to make the push evidently i was wrong but i don't know cloud nine were the one who's wrong in the long in the long run weren't they <laughs> up to cctv and cash now this one went well again for them before but that was a lot to do with the fact that axiomatic were very unassertive in making their attack onto this point they've chosen not to bring the capitan this time which is something that they did do before so that's interesting evidently axiomatic have different ideas in mind c9 not got any of the traditional uh garage holding operators maybe gonna put the smoke up there which you sometimes see but they haven't got a, a long acog available to them usually you see uh, the maestro sometimes you actually see a dock be used that is the preference of some teams i don't think you really see a dock loads in korea but you never know always nice to have a bulletproof camera and a stim shot i guess if that's your thing evidently not in this case though lots of fed up down here ocn just getting prepared and i think ocn hasn't actually been playing too terribly he's had some good ideas he he's very proactive when it comes to going on these flanks it's just sometimes he has been overwhelmed and i think sometimes his decisions to make flanks are a little bit late so they're made a point where while he'll be going for a flank he will be quite disadvantaged by maybe a man advantage on the side of axiomatic and that means he has very little backup that's going to support him in making those flanks setting up any kind of a crossfire so i think he needs to be a little bit earlier with that just seeing nero back off a little bit trying to get heady to sort of bait him into using those batteries because of course he doesn't want to be bandit tricked don't want to be losing those breach charges had he's getting ready to put one down but it looks like it's gonna work yeah there we go and Hedy now just heading on into the stairway back up as the members of axiomatic come on through rbt cooking this nade here was able to open up the floor it seems so now the members of axiomatic are actually starting to be able to move into the building this is unprecedented given that they really struggled with this before now they've just got to deal with the smoke or at least that's the primary aim right here for nero and also potentially for jinu who looks like he's getting ready to move in through cctv from the eastern side sweep like is going to be going down so their aim was fulfilled they have lost the smoke or they have put the smoke into his grave followed up by the jaeger as well so cloud nine at this man disadvantage huge man disadvantage now that envy taylor joins them and axiomatic have little to no pressure going against them as they're able to start to move in that was a very late reaction there from heady 
if you're going to be watching a, a sight line for anyone to walk in front of you, you want to be quick with it. But in goes the C4. Does get Nero in the process. That is good news, at least for Cloud9. 30 seconds, or at least just over 30 seconds to go. And we are relying on this Valkyrie and this Bandit to do all of the work for Cloud9 as Axiomatic move in plant going down and we're starting to see them move forward a little bit it looks like potentially they're going to go for the retake scenario let it happen and wait for him to move out that's exactly what does not happen <laughs> well it's exactly what cloud nine tried to do but got caught out in and i think it was a little bit of high dreaming anyway not that that's a phrase but they were aiming a bit above their mark when you're only left with two people like that and you want to go in for a retake and the remaining members of the enemy team are just very close by, you're kind of not in a great position. Jinu, for his kind of not great first two rounds, is actually doing pretty well at the top of the scoreboard with seven kills right now, which you would expect from the role that he is playing. But... Uh, from the first two rounds, it's at least nice to see a bit of redemption. So now the sides have been switched and we're going to gym bedroom as the first point on site. Not necessarily the normal choice for the first side. Interesting that Axiomatic haven't opted to go for the mirror like Cloud9 did. They are going to be going for the electrification, but instead they've gone for the mozzie. So they'll be able to have that extra roam game, a little bit of denial for Cloud9's droning. That's always useful as well. Especially in the sort of small close quarters areas. If you can block off a decent amount. I think the the radius of a mozzie pest is two and a half meters, something like that. So if you can block off some of these rooms with those pests and prevent Cloud9 from being able to do that droning, that could end up being exceptionally useful. That said, Cloud9 are not a team that I would necessarily describe as a huge droning team. I said it earlier on at the beginning of the series, but they're a lot more of a brawn over brains <laughs> sort of team, almost. At least compared to Scars, that's definitely how it turned out to be. And so they do use brute force a little bit more than sort of spending a lot of time doing intricate amount of droning. Nonetheless, if Elmo can get a good roam game off of the mozzie then that could be what turns out to be the end of cloud nine and comes the thatcher emp once again using the double the x kairos and the therm charge to oh, oh no <laughs> you hate to see it when the x kairos does that and it just you end up with like a little line in the wall I don't know. It's an interesting one. Nonetheless, they have been able to open up the jacuzzi wall. That's going to give them an opportunity to move in a little bit. RBT in the bathroom here, just waiting, seeing if he can get someone through the wall. Nova now has found him. And this is going to be interesting. Oh, into the smoke. You're going to be losing some HP for that one, sweet black. Yeah, down he goes as he breathes it in. And Nero getting the final shot onto him as well. So Cloud9 losing the first member and not having that buck could hurt them quite a bit. But they are going to have to continue moving on forward. While everyone on Axiomatic is remaining at full health, full HP, and all ready to spring in at any one time and bringing down those drones quite consistently as well so cloud nine going in a little bit more blind compared to how axiomatic are aware of what is going on that's where we start to see everyone sort of moving around nova's the only one staying up on the balcony while everyone is changing hibana or mb taylor i should say is his real name going on a bit of an anti-roam once you've opened 
up your hard breach the hibana can be a little bit more of a fragger but now we're starting to see some of those frags and refrags coming back out with cloud nine taking the top spot in the kill feed there but now it's back to a two versus two just the bandit and kaid remaining on the side of axiomatic and there's so much pressure on jinu not quite able to get that last kill that he was going for there and out come the stuns nova's making the rotation here with heady to watch his flank planting the diffuser but the question is is still going to be able to get in well there's heady down so Nova is all on his own, but he does have the ACOG there. So able to get a great sightline onto Jinu as he enters in through the room. And now Cyril knows that he is in the disadvantageous spot when it comes to trying to move in onto Nova. He's got limited time because he needs to be able to do the, the anti-defuse. The defuse defuse. But Nova will be the one to of course get him down and in that situation it does sort of put the attacker at the advantage because all you have to do is sit and wait for the defender to come into your sightline they're the one who is looking to seek you out you could just sit there all day and be fine so cloud nine do add one more onto their score that's going to be making them feel a little bit good given that axiomatic did have some successful few rounds going up against them when they were on the attack now cloud nine they're just going to be looking to kind of tear away a little bit for some more of that success going to be going down into church and arsenal for the next round and interestingly here axiomatic have decided they want to be bringing the maestro instead of i believe the smoke is what cloud nine were bringing when they were playing on this round so cyril going to be holding on to a long sight line, playing a bit more, well, I say a bit more of an anchor roll. Smoke is an anchor roll. But you play Smoke for his utility. You play him for the smoke grenades and to be able to slow someone's push. Now, of course, the Maestro, you also play for the utility because his evil eyes are some of the best gadgets in the game. You can have amazing intel as well as it being very hard to destroy, as well as being able to actually deal damage onto people. You can plant them in front of the typical planting sites so that if someone actually gets to plant the diffuser you can just shoot them in the back but maestro also is very good at holding the long sight lines with his alder one of the best guns in the game some people would say maybe slightly overpowered but we're not here for political debates elmo taking on the role of the pulse this is something that we did, of course, see from Cloud9. Worked out well for them in the first round, but they did have to change it up a little bit later, opting for the lesion instead when Axiomatic were able to make those stronger pushes, more assertive pushes down into the basement. Now, of course, unsurprising that we're seeing Sweet Black start up here with the buck and opening up those floors. This lets you get some angles down onto those below you puts the pressure on them and you can start to influence the positioning of the defending team sitting below okay interesting rbt is actually going to be removing that electric claw maybe he's decided he wants to put it somewhere else instead of the hatch i suppose we are yet to find out Interesting. Well, the floor is going to be opened above Elmo, so he's going to have to start moving. Throwing up that C4, not quite going to reach, unfortunately, for him. But he is going to have to be looking out a little bit more. The pressure is going to be coming onto him even more. Those were the evil eyes that you were seeing from the maestro. No one in their sights just yet. And OCN holding onto this angle on the Zephyr. He's looking to see if there's anyone below that he can get without having to push down too much too soon. So far, everyone's still remaining. With over half the round gone and under a minute left. And it's quite a... I don't know, this is quite a slow push. 
from Cloud9. Well, I say no one has gone down just yet, but Sweet Black able to get the first kill using the frag grenade. So it looks like it is going to be a war of nades just now. Nova's going to start planting here in Arsenal. And this is where you start to see Axiomatic having to move around. Nero, we saw trying to make a bit of a rotation, not going to work out. And it does not help that there was, of course, friendly fire on the team as well. A bit of a disaster for Axiomatic at the end there with the pressure of the rush. And Cloud9 going to be taking another round on their attack, moving forward to put things 5-3. to three. You know what really sucks is when you accidentally kill your teammate with a C4. <laughs> but it is one of the risks when you're playing that pulse is you have to make such fleeting decisions when it comes to the placement of the C4s. It's, it's, there's that balance of I don't want to waste it and I need to use it because if I don't use it now, they're going to come in and rush me and I'm going to die. And sometimes, you know, one thing leads to another and your team dies. <laughs> But going to CCTV and Cash, Axiomatic choosing to bring the Goyo this time, not someone that we have seen so far in this round. Cloud9, I don't think really are Goyo players. We've seen Goyo be used quite successfully against them. Scars played a great Goyo against them in Cafe Dostoevsky. And of course, the double mute mozzie, that's also going to have that great denial against the team. And I have to say, Cloud9 did use droning a lot more than I've seen from them in the past. Evidently something that they have learned from and they're trying to improve upon. But with the mute mozzie, it's going to make it a lot harder for them. And basically, this whole setup is all about denial, really. It's going to make it very hard for Cloud9 to be able to push on in because not only are you going to struggle to know where people are, you're going to have your roots blocked off by the Goyo shields. Your choice to destroy them is going to come at the risk of either hurting yourself or closing off certain points of ingress, certain rotation lines. Of course, there's always the chance that you could end up injuring or killing one of your enemies, which is always a good thing. And they've been able to open up the wall fairly soon as well, which is great for them. But it's going to put a lot more pressure on the defense of Axiomatic. I'm hoping for their sake that that was something that they were expecting for Cloud9 to be able to just open that up fairly easy. Maybe lull them, uh, lull them into a false sense of security, although I highly doubt they're naive enough to believe that. It's more that they should be expecting a slightly stronger defense starting to move forward. There is a Goya shield going down. So that's one room is on fire. And of course, that does kind of cut off that rotation point and make it a lot harder for the team to move forward from there. And this is the kind of physical denial that you can have with those Goya shields. And in fact, when we look at the CCTV and cash area that we were in just then, it is just fairly kind of free for axiomatic right now in goes the x kairos to try and open up cash wall able to get one on it didn't see if they were able to get the second one just yet but so far cloud nine not really been able to push up into the point so far well so far, say that twice in a sentence, and you sound really intelligent, Geo. Nero, going to be the first to fall. That's going to be that main roamer for Axiomatic gone, and this could give Cloud9 a little bit more security. Elno's going to be going as well. Definitely more security, but out comes the C4 and some double kills. This is going well for Cloud9. Just have to deal with the Goyo now as they try and push on into the site, and with 36 seconds remaining, this is a great situation for them to be in. They have plenty of time, as long as they don't get caught out. RBT isn't at full health, but you never know what can happen. Sneaking up up on now there are players below him 
so no one actually too close by other than Nova and when you're going against him oh ho, ho, he tried to do the run out he tried to shoot him while he was on the rappel and it wasn't enough Nova was waiting he was able to bring him down just with that one tap at the end there that was a pretty good end there for Cloud9 and it looked like Axiomatic had a fairly solid defense set up but doesn't always work out in your favor when the attacking team start to get aggressive. Just waiting. Okay, they're going to be going to Church and Arsenal. I was going to say, just waiting to see what point we will be heading to next. And Axiomatic are not having a very good defensive round. Suddenly, they are at 50% of the score that Cloud9 are at. And Cloud9 are on match point. So if Axiomatic do fail to defend this point correctly, then of course that sends the first round into Cloud9's hands and it will send Axiomatic further down in the standings, which is something that, to be honest, they kind of can't afford to be in right now. So Axiomatic chosen to bring the Valkyrie with them this time. Interesting. And Cloud9 have chosen to bring the Finker. So going to be relying on that Adrenal Surge. And this is a an operator that Cloud9 have been able to play fairly successfully before. They like to... Oh my god, they like to use Finker with Montagna. They like to use Finker with Blitz. They just really like to use Finker. So that Adrenal Surge they're going to be relying on to kind of beef up their players, add that overheal and really facilitate their aggressive pushes which is what tends to take their enemies by surprise and their ability to overrun defenses in ways that they a have in this series so far but b have in other series against other teams axiomatic really going to be relying on those black eyes actually in this scenario because they're going to need that intel to know where the finger is and be able to target her and of course when you don't have the pulse this time round, having that extra C4 from the Valkyrie is very useful. Of course, the Bandit does bring C4 as well, but he only carries one. Being able to have that from Valkyrie, who I assume is carrying it as well, as opposed to her deployable shield, will make things a little bit easier. Down goes the camera. Think of coming in through the garage. And of course, you situate Elmo on the Valkyrie on the stairs. Kind of unsurprising. Ooh, Jinu, not quite going to get that shot, but it is very close. A little bit too close for comfort this early in the round. Cloud9 have got to be careful. There's the Adrenal Surge, just protecting some of, or rather all of, the team for a little while just then. Interesting that the entirety of the team of Axiomatic are playing downstairs. Sometimes you do see a little bit of a roam game going on upstairs, but actually I suppose when it's quite common to have your roamer here play in blue, that'll be the Jaeger. You don't necessarily have someone upstairs. And Cloud9 opening up the hatches. That's why we're seeing the Adrenal Surge here again, just to facilitate their drop down onto the floor below and allow them the opportunity to be a little bit more healthy as they start to do that and start to apply that extra pressure onto Axiomatic. Sweet Black's getting a pretty good view down here onto Arsenal, but he can't actually quite see anybody. Now, I th I'm pretty sure the Valkyrie... Oh, well, Nero is going to be the first to go down. Bye bye, Roma. But I'm pretty sure the Valkyrie was the six picks and they may be expecting a pulse to be waiting below. And that's going to be taking them by surprise. Jinu is going to be falling as well. So this is not good news for Axiomatic. Envy Taylor moving on forward and facilitated by the Adrenal Surge. It's just going to make it so much easier. Cloud9 have a massive advantage here. But RBT being able to get those shots in return. In fact, did he get a double kill or a triple kill? Either way, he's doing really well. In goes the Ney, but not quite enough to bring OCN down. Although he is slightly low health. Going against RBT though, he is able to win it out. And Cloud9 win clubhouse against axiomatic and that is a disaster for axiomatic as they will be going further down in the standings with cloud nine taking the three points from this win so i think this was actually a really interesting series because it 
highlighted points of improvement as particularly for cloud nine in my opinion because cloud nine as i say they're always a very physical team and they did use that to their advantage in this series they definitely used the element of surprise the element of physical prowess <laughs> I don't really know how best else to say it, but the fact that they were not afraid to move forward and be aggressive, but they did also use some smart plays. I really liked what they did with the mirror and was kind of interested in the fact that Axiomatic didn't choose to do that in return. There were some things that Cloud9 did that I found questionable, like how they chose to play Envy Taylor on the lesion instead of placing the goo mines in the, the the problem area that had allowed Axiomatic to win the previous round. They decided to have them in church and and that wasn't even where the site that wasn't even the site that was trying to be taken but either way axiomatic just really failed to have a particularly sturdy defense they certainly had some good ideas and they had a number of defenses that slowed cloud nine down at least for the first half the first two thirds of the round but the second that cloud nine were able to sort of find that little nook that they could break apart and force themselves into that's where things started to go down because axiomatic just didn't have the firepower they didn't have the manpower and they just didn't have the ability to hold cloud nine back once the tsunami started rushing in so i hope you enjoyed and um maybe i'll do some more of these i really enjoy korean pro league korean Rainbow Siege is, is like my big passion. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.